All right, so continuing with our stay ball mash series in six millimeter arc, what we're gonna do today is try to get an idea of how temperature stable this powder is. Now, I've never run any of these temp stability tests because they're pretty much all over the internet for almost all the powders, at least all the powders that people wanna use. This powder being very new, there's really no information out there other than what Winchester says is how it's temp stable. So what I'm gonna to do today is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna load up some rounds. We're gonna do three shot groups. We're gonna do 28 grains of stay ball match, the 105 grain boat to a hollow point from Hornady. Same load we shot in the last video, or at least same combination of components with Winchester number 41 primers, same overall length. Now I back down to 28 grains because we're gonna make these rounds cold and hot. I wanna make sure that we're very safe on our pressure. So what we're gonna do is again, we, we have three rounds loaded up at room temperature, which was measured about 62 degrees. Then I had three rounds that I put in my freezer for a little while. Those measured about 14 degrees. And then I went ahead and vacuum sealed three rounds and um, let them sit in 117 degree water for about an hour, an hour and a half. So hopefully that'll give us an idea of the kind of the variance or what's gonna happen when we change the temperature on this powder and go shoot it. We're gonna shoot them all at the same time. So should give us a good idea of how temperature change is gonna affect this powder. Now I chose these temperatures because I thought they were reasonable temperatures that someone might wanna shoot in. I know oftentimes people will go all the way up to like 150 degrees or something like that, but I'm never gonna go shoot at 150 degrees and this should give us some pretty good data on uh, what's gonna happen. So let's get on the range and let's uh, see what happens. All right, we're out here on the range trying to do this temperature stability test. Now, I just fired two rounds through the gun, so it's reasonably warmed up. Um, nice day, about 50 degrees. These first three, we're gonna shoot cold to warmest. So first three are going to be the ones that just came out of the freezer. These were measured at about 14 degrees. Now all these are the same charge, they're all loaded at the same time and everything like that. If it sounds like we're kind of rushing a little bit, we are because I don't want these rounds to warm up or get a bunch of condensation on them or anything like that. So just pulled them out of the freezer, 28 grains. We're gonna see how they shoot. We're gonna shoot at the same target the whole time because I wanna see how point of impact and all that moves as well. So the coldest shots first, these are about 14 degrees. And then we'll work our way up to room temperature and then we'll go to the ones that were 100 degrees. All right, so we'll see what happens. 22 inch six arc, Savage 110 switchback. All right, that first one came out at 2630. Twenty six oh four. Alright, that one was six twenty six twenty four. So obviously they grouped well. So coming out of the freezer uh, didn't hurt our group size. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new series and now we're shooting the ones that are at room temperature. These were measured at about sixty two degrees. Again, same load. That one was 26.47. That one was 26.44. That one was 26.39. So the other rounds I have are at about 105 degrees and uh, they've been vacuum sealed in water. So let's see how things change from, at 14 degrees we averaged about 2620. At 62 degrees we averaged about 2640. So that doesn't seem bad, 20 feet per second and about 50 degrees. Let me go grab the ones that are vacuum sealed at about 100 five degrees and we'll load those up and shoot them. All right, so I've got my five rounds here that are 105 degrees. Feel nice and warm on my hands here. And we'll make a new series here and uh, 
We'll shoot these five, or these three. All right, so interestingly, that one was only 26.13. That was 2640. And that one was 2605. So some weird stuff there happening with our, our rounds that were uh, vacuum sealed and submerged. I almost wonder if, I mean, they were, they were vacuum sealed so there's no water in the bag, but the way that that velocity kind of dropped, I'm not sure if we can really consider that. I don't know. We'll, I've never run this test before. So we also had a weird extreme spread on uh, the other ones. Eh, I don't know. I wonder if that did something weird to our test. We may have to come up with a different way to heat them up. But we still should have some good data because we had those ones that were at 14 degrees and those ones that were like 60 degrees. So... Uh, Let's get over there, let's check out the target. All right, we're out here on the range again. Um, obviously I had to redo this test just to be sure nothing weird happened. I just fired two shots through the gun, so it's warmed up. Temperature's about the same as it was yesterday. Nice day. Um, I've got three rounds cooking downstairs in the oven at about 125, 130 degrees. I'm gonna go grab them out. I'm gonna measure the temperature of the outside of them and then we're gonna shoot them. This, is, this should get us about the same test we did yesterday, although we're not introducing the water. It's a little bit less controlled because my oven will only, uh, the lowest it will go is 170, so I had to turn it on, warm it up, shut it off, let it cool down till I could measure the temperature of about 130, and then I put the rounds in there. So let me go get them and I'll measure the temperature and then we'll shoot the three of them. All right, so they're measuring just over 100 degrees. Some of them are 103, some are 104. Um, now I can only measure the outside, obviously. I can't measure what they are on the inside, but this is just a kind of a confirmation test to see if those results we had yesterday make sense. All right, so we we'll go ahead and shoot them. Uh, same, it's actually the same target. Try to put it in the same place, and so hopefully we'll have some consistency with our point of impact as well. Okay, so we averaged 26.20 yesterday with these warmer rounds. That one came out 26.44. That makes sense. Okay, that one averaged 26.53. And that one shot 26.37. So, a little higher average, I believe, than what we saw yesterday. But... Uh, I think that water, something to do with submerging them, did impact our test. But I think we got some better numbers here. So let's get back to the bench and let's talk about it. All right, so looking at all 12 pieces there, we've got our coldest rounds on the left and moving across to our two sets that had our 105 degree. So as you can tell, there's really no difference in our pressure signs. The primers look fine. There's no injector smears. Now, obviously, we picked a pretty mild load because we kind of expected to have to... Uh, um, have a little bit of wiggle room, which then turns out we didn't really need it, but I think we're good on pressure. All right, so first things first here, we're gonna take a look at our target. So this is now 12 shot, all at those different temperatures that you guys saw. And as you can tell, this is a very consistent load. Being this is just a random load that I selected, we still shot a 0.81 inch 12 shot group. And uh, three, of these shot, three of these rounds were shot on a completely different day. Now, taking a look at our velocity, um, I'll throw up a graph here of kind of the temperature and the velocity, and then we'll also talk about it. Now, first things first, I think the, uh, the rounds that were vacuum sealed and submerged in water, I don't think that was the best option. We had that weird drop in velocity, which warmer rounds shouldn't do that, so that's why I went ahead and retested it with the 105 degree load tested out of my oven. So, obviously, our freezer, or our 14 degree load, we shot 2620 average, 13.7 SD. 
Our room temperature load at about 62 degrees Fahrenheit, we shot 2643 with a 4.1 SD, and then our rounds that came out of the oven at about 105 degrees shot 2645 with an 8.0 SD. So if we look at those three samples, um, we had, what, 43 degrees, or we had 43 feet per second different in average um, from 62 to 15 degrees, and then we only gained about 2 feet per second going from room temperature to about 105 degrees. So, you know, I can't tell you for sure that the powder on the inside was exactly the temperature I was measuring on the outside, but overall, from rounds that are pretty hot to rounds that are very cold, we only had about 25 feet per second different in our average. So that tells me that stable match is, is actually very stable. Now, I plan to run these tests again um, as it gets summer because that, that warm one was the one that was tough for me to warm up. So we'll run this test again, but so far I'm pretty impressed with stable match. I think it's going to be a good powder and we're going to continue to test it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this test. I've never run any tests like this and I definitely learned a lot on how I'll do it in the future. But thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you next week.